Ugh. Oh, hey everyone. I won't make you wait anymore. I was just helping you practice patience. Patience is waiting until later for what you want to do right now. All this month, we've been learning about how to wait with patience instead of complaining or getting angry. When you're hungry, but dinner's not ready yet, you can be patient. When you want to ask your mom a question, but she's in the middle of a phone call, you can be patient. When something happens to you that just doesn't make any sense, you can be patient and trust that God has a bigger plan. Like it says in our memory verse, Psalms 27, 14, wait for the Lord, be strong, don't lose hope, wait for the Lord. We can wait for what God has planned. We can stay strong and trust that he knows best. Check out today's Big God Story. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story inspired by the book of Genesis, chapter 25, verses 24 through 34. When Abraham's son Isaac grew up, he married a girl named Rebekah, but it didn't seem as though they'd be able to have children. Please God, give us children. But God answered Isaac's prayers and Rebekah became pregnant with twins. Isaac, I'm pretty sure they're having a wrestling match in here. Oh, definitely boys. Rebecca asked God about the struggle she could feel. He told her, Two nations are in your body. One nation will be stronger than the other. The older son will serve the younger one. When it was time for the babies to be born, they came out fighting. Esau was born first. He came out with a strong set of lungs and a head full of red hair. His brother Jacob was born moments later, still holding on to Esau's heel. How on earth did he manage that? The brothers shared the same birthday, but as they grew, that was about the only thing they had in common. Esau loved to roam far out into the wilderness. I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 more. Jacob preferred the comforts of home. The sun is so hot, I'll just take a little nap in the tent. Esau loved to hunt wild animals. That is one excellent wildebeest. Jacob preferred a different type of hunting. Not you, not you. Ha! <laughs> the perfect ripe honeydew melon. One fine morning, Esau headed out into the wilds in search of adventure and some nice juicy venison. <laughs> I'll feast tonight. But Esau went all morning without spotting a single rabbit. Ugh, should have packed a lunch. In the afternoon, he tracked a deer for hours but he missed his chance as the deer sprang away. Ah! At last, Esau headed for home, defeated. He was tired and irritated and so hungry he could eat an entire woolly mammoth. Must eat food. As Esau neared camp, a delicious smell wafted out to greet him. Food! Jacob had been home all day, resting and plucking his favorite herbs from his garden. A little coriander, some dill. As evening approached, Jacob used his savory herbs to whip up a tasty red lentil stew and a batch of fresh, buttery bread. This will crisp up nicely on the hot stones. By the time Esau had arrived in camp, Jacob's stew was simmered to perfection and the bread was hot and crusty. Food! Food! Esau lunged for the stew cauldron, ready to grab a bowl, but Jacob blocked his path. Not so fast. Step aside, I'm hungry. Clearly. Just let me have some of that red stew. Certainly. Esau tried to dive for the stew pot again. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh. Just one itty bitty thing. What? Well, first, uh, Give me the rights that belong to you as the oldest son. Esau spent more time listening to his stomach than his brain. So in that moment, his stomach won out. Look, I'm dying of hunger. If I die, those rights are pointless anyway. Now give me that stew. Esau sprang forward once more. 
Ah! Promise to give me your rights. Fine. Fine what? Fine, I promise. Promise what? I promise to give you my rights as the oldest. Cool. Help yourself. Jacob stepped aside as Esau hurled himself at the stew pot. Stew! Esau happily gorged himself on rich stew and fresh bread. But as his stomach filled up, he had time to stop and think again. Esau had just traded the rights of a lifetime for a meal that would only last him a few hours. Jacob ended up playing a big part as the leader of his family in God's big story. As a matter of fact, Jacob was part of the family line that eventually led to Jesus. Because Esau was impatient, he missed out on all that, even though it was originally his birthright. The next time you have to wait for something you really want, take a second to think. Think about what it could cost if you're not patient. Remember, if you don't wait, it could cost you. It takes a lot of trust to wait for something you want right now. You have to trust God and believe that His timing is always perfect, even when you can't understand why. If you have trouble waiting and you need some help, you can always talk to God about it. Or you could talk to other people. You know, we would love to talk to you. Your parents would love to talk to you. Let's pray and ask God to help us to do that. Dear God, we know that it can cost us when we're not willing to wait. We get impatient like Esau. We forget to make the wise choice. And when that happens, we often have to face the consequences. Help us keep a clear head and stay patient. Please give us the strength to wait for the things we want now. We love you and we ask these things in your name. Amen.